I've got a Game Boy Advance here that's seen better days. Under the screen, there's some white residue. I don't know if some kind of fluid or polishing compound got under there. It's kind of hard to tell. It doesn't look great, though. Really dusty, kind of beat up in general. I think we can clean a lot of this up. But the main issue, this thing won't turn on. Let me pop some batteries in, and I'll show you what I mean. We get absolutely no response. It just doesn't turn on at all. We can see some definite corrosion happening around those terminals, the green color. It's not terrible and it's not on the pins directly. Similar story on this side. I think our problem here is likely to be the switch itself. Let's get inside and see what we can do. There's just six screws that we'll get at with a 2.5 millimeter tri-wing. Now I'm pretty positive there should also be a screw here, but it's already gone on this unit. But I think I want to clean this whole thing off, so I'm going to take kind of everything out. We don't really need to take it apart any further than this to look at the switch, so let's look at it. There's a lot of cool dust and stuff, but can't see much from out here. I'm going to need to desolder this metal piece on the top to actually get a look at the inside. Good rule of thumb on stuff like this, especially when you see it's all dusty, is to just clean it off with alcohol before you even start working on it. That's a lot better. Add a little flux. Doing this can be pretty tricky, and what I try to do is get something under the side of that metal piece that I can pry out this way as I heat up the solder joint. So I've got my tweezers behind it now, kind of applying a pulling force. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. So we got it to pop up. For now, we'll just bend this up out of the way, and we'll remove the other side. Take the plastic bit out, and we'll clean up the solder area with some braid. Inside that switch doesn't look too bad, so what we're doing here also is kind of cleaning that out as we clean the solder area with the alcohol. So inside the switch is looking pretty good now, but I think we can polish it up a little more. I have here a trimmed mechanical pencil eraser, and I'm going to use that to try and polish up these contacts. After doing that and cleaning with alcohol, here's how it looks now. I think it looks pretty clean. So let's move on to this part of the switch. So if you can see the two metal contactors, they're kind of green and dirty too. Start with alcohol. Well, I learned the hard way, this tiny little metal piece can actually come out of the switch. I think we can get back in though. Before I do that, I want to get my tweezers and pinch this in the center and make sure those pins get bent up. They look like they have a decent bend in them now. Let's try and get it back in the switch body. So with the switch clean and the contacts bent in place, I think we can start putting things back together. Give that a quick test. Oh yeah, we did it. We're loading games too. All right, that's it on the GBA not turning on fix. In this case, a power switch fix. If that's all you came for, feel free to find another video. Otherwise, the rest of this one will be restoration Focusing on getting rid of some of the dirt, hopefully dealing with the residue under this faceplate, just making it look more respectable overall. So we'll get into that now. Good news that the power switch was just dirty and cleaning and kind of reshaping the context is all it took to fix it. That's better than having to replace the switch altogether. For the restoration, we're gonna fully disassemble everything at this point. Make sure we get off all the buttons and such. For the screen, we should be able to kind of get under it and gently walk around it. Okay, now be careful of this window of adhesive. Looks like we have a little scuff here as well. It might just be a smudge. We'll deal with that in a bit. This faceplate has to come off. I'm gonna need a hairdryer. We're just gonna heat up around the perimeter here to soften the adhesive. We are getting some serious resistance on this thing. I think someone like glued this on, which means our job just got a lot harder. Well, the screen's a lost cause at this point. As you can see, man, yeah, why would they glue it? It should not look like this. It's pretty clear something was bonding this beyond just the adhesive. This little line of residue is cured super glue, my best guess. And that's why we had such a tough time getting this off and why a lot of it is actually left behind on the shell. To get some of the screen fragments off, I need something a little more heavy duty. It'll be exactly what you expect. Chunking everything out of here. I'm gonna do a lot of it off camera. This will take me a lot of time, but ultimately it's just gonna be scraping 
everything off. Here's a progress update after about five minutes. This is going a lot better than I was expecting with a sturdy knife, in this case, Kershaw, not sponsored by the way, maybe one day if I play my cards right. With a sturdy knife, it's pretty easy to start scraping this away. It definitely takes some elbow grease though. We'll come back to it when it's all done. After about 15 minutes, this is where we're at. I probably will do a finer cleanup before the new screen goes on. I just wanted to get it to the point of where we can do an overall clean with dish soap on these parts. On the other side of the shell, we just need to get this metal piece off. We want to get these stickers off and that battery terminal out. Everything's drying off. It's important to do this next to a full loaf of bread. We'll give some attention to the circuit board as well. Some of these pads have a little bit of undesirable corrosion right there. That's not good. We'll clean that up. These switches themselves are a little dusty. Last thing on the board is this battery terminal. That cleaned up very well. That was probably battery acid rather than corrosion, so I'm glad we got it off there. And that's it for the board. We'll put this aside until it's all ready to come back together. This next step is bound to be the most challenging. I do have some finishing touches to do on the inside where the screen was laid. However, there's also this dried glue. You can see the line of it there. To an extent, it's all around the border of where the screen faceplate was. I'll use a small knife to clean this up as best as I can. It won't really be possible to get this back to a perfect surface finish, but we just want to get it better than it is now into something more visually appealing. We don't like the look of that rough glue dried everywhere. Then periodically I'm going to be hitting this with a magic eraser to smooth out the knife marks. Here's the finished result. As I warned, I couldn't maintain the surface finish perfectly. You can kind of see some of the scrapey marks from the knife, which were necessary to remove the hardened glue. I'm much happier with it like this than how it was before. I have another screen cover I salvaged from a different unit. You can see there are some scratches on it that I want to buff out as best as I can. I have it on wax paper to preserve the adhesive underneath. I just have plastic polish that's meant to be used on like car headlights and stuff. We'll see how that goes. This is what we're looking like now. Still some of those deeper scratches. I'm gonna call it good enough. And we're gonna try to use the old adhesive that's already on the screen plate and just put it right on. You can see some of those scratches since this is a salvage screen plate, but you know, I'm gonna live with it. It seems to be stuck pretty well. So no new adhesive is gonna be used. Before getting to the other shell half, I would like to get the screen in place. Just wanna get this thing into a decent shape, clean off some of the junk we're seeing here. Might be a little tricky, but we'll give it a try. I think that's okay for now. Let's look back at the screen. So that does appear to be some scuffing. We'll use our polishing compound to try and get that out. That worked very well, and the scuffs are now gone. Get our foam adhesive back in place. So now things look like this. When we're happy with it, we can bring the shell back and just put it into place. Not too bad. Back to this shell half, it's gonna be more of what we've already done to get rid of some of the yellowing and just general dirtiness. And that's magic eraser with some alcohol. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Here's where we're at now and things look much better. It's not perfect as far as coloration, but we've pretty drastically improved it. I think we're ready to get everything back together. This time I do have the screw that was missing at first. I got it from that salvage unit where I got the screen cover from. Unfortunately, this unit was missing the battery cover, so I had to buy an aftermarket replacement. For me, that'll take a few days to get here. For you, it'll be more like half a second. It's here! Look at that! I also ordered a replacement faceplate for the screen. But I think I'm gonna leave it with the original. Even though there are some scratches, the logo on Game Boy Advance just looks a lot nicer on the real thing, don't you think? There is a bit of color mismatch from the battery plate to the outside shell. I was kind of expecting that. It's not terrible, and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. That's all I've got for this video. I hope you all enjoyed this repair and restoration. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.